My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. What I have today is a news episode. Basically, there's a product that just hit the market that I want to talk about. This is a very interesting shelter, and I'm interested to get your thoughts about this. With this product, it happens to be one of the most expensive civilian grade tents out on the market today. It's insane. That's the best way to describe this tent. It's insane. Okay, so the tent is called the Dragoon, and it's from a company that I have a lot of respect for. Over the last couple of years, if you've had any experience within military circles, you've heard of the company called Light Fighter. They make a number of U.S. military products. They are a contractor for the U.S. government. They make the Light Fighter 1, 2, the Catamount tent. They make tarps, hammocks. They make deployment bags, bug repellent, and more. The company is highly regarded within those circles. Once you move to the civilian market, Light Fighter is not a name that comes up very often, even though in my opinion, it should, because the company does offer some very unique products, products that I've never seen before, products that I highly recommend. For an example, the Light Fighter one-person tent or two-person tent. It's a great tent, it's military quality, but with a civilian design. Weight's not bad, but yet it's super strong. The cool thing is, the company offers what they call a cold weather kit, and it converts the three-season tent into a four-season tent. It's an awesome system that I've never seen before from any other company, and the thing is this, it works incredibly well. It turns that three-season tent, which offers a ton of ventilation, into a four-season tent that holds in some heat, it blocks wind, it blocks snow. It's pretty slick. With that being said though, not everything the company has done has been a hit. They've had some issues along the way, but luckily they've always corrected those issues. Talking about a product that simply does not work in my opinion is their bug repellent. The bullseye bug repellent, it was recently adopted by the US military. With my testing, it simply does not work. It may work against ticks, but definitely not mosquitoes. I've squirted that shit all over myself and the mosquitoes, they don't care at all. So. With that product, it's not good. Anyways, folks, let's focus on the topic of this video, the Dragoon Tent. This thing looks to be insane in just about every single way, and I cannot wait to read your comments down below. This is gonna be interesting. So let's just get the cat out of the bag here. This tent costs $4,300. This is not a military product from what I understand. This is being marketed directly towards the civilian market. Now that we got the price out of the way, let's talk about how Light Fighter describes this tent. Okay, so the company describes the tent as this, and I will paraphrase some of this for the sake of time. The Dragoon is an all-season expeditionary tent built to endure nature's most extreme conditions. It features a geodesic dome design durable fabrics, six pole frame. The tent is designed to withstand strong winds, heavy rain, accumulating snow, and provide comfort from the elements. The Dragoon is large enough to comfortably accommodate up to eight people and their gear. The Dragoon by Light Fighter is a robust four season tent designed and built for the military and now is available for the adventurer who demands the most from their gear. Due to its configurability, the Dragoon can be used in the summer as a shade tent, mild weather shelter, and a winter bunker. Check this out, the tent features a stove jack. It features HVAC duct connections, Dynamo cord, built-in stowaway pockets, internal loops for hanging lights and accessories. The company goes on to say that this is the most feature-rich tent available. The tent is big, so big in fact that it has eight doors. Each one of these doors feature a tuck-away panel, eight permethrin-treated mesh window vents, which is a bug repellent. It features a removable floor for various setup configurations. It's made from the most durable materials, superior craftsmanship. It's the shelter of choice for the discerning outdoorsman who needs to seek refuge in a quality shelter. So that's how the company describes the Dragoon tent. Now let's go over the stats that the company has posted on the website. So there's two center poles, four side poles, there's four vent poles. You have 16 Dynama guy lines, four additional guy lines for rigging. You have eight sand and snow parachute stakes. You have 20 XL ground stakes. The capacity is eight person, eight doors. This is a four season tent. It features aluminum press fit, all weather shock corded poles. The tent dimensions, 77 inches tall, 157.5 inches long and wide. The pack size of this is 30 inches by 17 inches by 16 inches. And the weight of this bad boy, 37 and a half pounds. So as far as the stats go, that's all that the company provides. As far as information goes, that's it. There really is a lot of important information missing from the Light Fighter website concerning this product. For an example, what are the materials? The company doesn't state. What's the hydrostatic head rating? How waterproof is this? What sort of testing's been done with this tent? What can it handle? What should it be used for? Does it have a 5,000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating? A 10,000, is it higher than that? Can the tent withstand sustained 40 mile an hour winds? 
50, 60, I don't know. The same question applies for snow loading. What are we talking about here? Six inches, four inches. As I've been going over the information for this tent, I've been showing you all pictures of this tent from the website. Before I even talk about those, let's go over some points of interest that I have concerning this tent, concerning this product. So first off, I think the tent looks awesome. It looks awesome. I love everything about the tent based upon those pictures and this information alone, with the exception of the price. The tent features eight doors. That's how big this thing is, eight doors doors. Think about that for a second. With every one of those doors, you have vents, you have mesh panels. That's a lot of airflow when you need it. That's a lot of versatility in all conditions, really. I mean, you can have it set up on top of a mountain. It's exposed. The wind's coming this way. The panels are shut. On this side, you have them open. I mean, there's a lot that you can do there. I can't help but wonder, is it truly eight people and their gear? I have to throw up a question mark concerning the size because when you look at the pictures at the Light Fighter website, there's not much to go on. So when you're actually looking at the pictures of the tent itself, it looks quite small. But there's one picture where it shows individuals, some trucks next to the tent, and it looks massive. It's one thing to see diagrams and read measurements. It's something else to actually see the product. So talking about the pictures for a second, one of the issues that I have concerning this product, not only is the lack of information concerning the materials, the testing and so on, it's a lack of good high quality pictures. We have some very low resolution pictures of this tent. We have some pictures with what looks to be weird Photoshop with like pixelated helicopters in the background, which I think is really cheesy. Based upon the pictures alone, you can't gauge this tent very well. And that's why I'm saying, eight people and their gear i don't know based upon the pictures shown i don't quite see it it's definitely a big tent but anyways another point to make about this tent is that the storage size is massive what was it 30 inches by 17 by 16 i think yeah there is a picture of the storage size and as you can see here it's massive basically it's like a luggage bag with rollers and a handle. With that being said though, considering the size of this tent, the weight's not bad in my opinion. Less than 40 pounds, it's not too bad. But that does make me question the materials. What are they? Based upon the pictures, I'm thinking some form of ripstop nylon, but I can't be sure. One thing that I found really interesting about this product is that the tent has been treated with permethrin, not the company's own bullseye. That's because I believe the bullseye simply doesn't work. In my testing, it didn't. But permethrin really does work well against bugs. Mosquitoes, ticks, all that stuff, it works amazing. The thing is with permethrin, you can put it on your gear, you can put it on your clothing, you cannot put it on your skin. There is an exception when it comes to like scabies treatments. There is a form of that stuff that you can put on the skin, but that's something different. Anyways, going back to the point though, that may tell you something about the bullseye bug repellent and how well it works. They're not using it with their own tent for a reason, so there you go. Next up, the company does make a reference to this tent being used with the military, but I did some searching around and I can find no evidence of that being the case. Or at least I couldn't find any sort of NSN numbers or anything like that. I'm not saying that it's not used with the military, I'm just saying I couldn't find any information. Maybe the company can clarify that. Based upon what I'm seeing on their website concerning this tent, this looks to be a product made for the civilian market not the military market. I love the fact that you have a stove jack port and the floor can be taken out. So you can use this thing in the winter time and make it a hot tent. That is sweet. One thing that I thought was interesting about the design of this tent is that the poles are partially exposed, which means they're going to be exposed to snow, to ice, to rain, and so on. That can be a problem in some situations. Having to thaw out poles to get them apart when you're breaking down the tent, it's a huge pain in the ass. And it's one of the issues that I had with their catamount tent. The tent itself is rather strong, rather burly, but the poles are exposed. When you have snow falling, lands on the poles right there at the joints, that snow melts, then it freezes. Then you have poles that are locked together and it can be a real pain having to thaw out those poles to get those poles apart. I've already spoken about the lack of information that's on their website, information that you would want, especially if you're going to purchase a $4,300 tent. <laughs> I could barely say that straight. It's almost so ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not worth it, but $4,300 for a tent is insanity. Since we're talking about price, let's focus on that for a second. That incredibly high price tag makes me question what the materials are even more so. Because $4,300 for typical nylon and some aluminum poles, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? So I'm, I'm very curious to see what this tent is capable of, what it's made from. I mean, all of that together combined could potentially justify the price of this tent. What sort of testing have they done? At this price tag, you're looking at true expedition tents, four season tents that you can take for like base camp camping 
at like Everest and stuff like that. I don't know, there, there's just a lot of questions here, a lot of things that we don't know about this tent that the company doesn't state. One more point to make about this tent, I am pretty sure that there has been a price increase on this over the last couple of months. Originally, a viewer asked me what I thought about this, that's the first time I learned of it, and I want to say the tent was maybe $3,400 or maybe $3,800, but now the price is $4,300. No matter what, this is a very pricey, very expensive tent, and I'm curious to hear from you all. What do you all think about the price? What do you all think about the size of this, the features of it? What do you all think about the poor quality photos, the Photoshop, I think it's Photoshop. What do you all think about the lack of information concerning this product? Already I know how many are going to react to a product like this and what they're going to say. For myself, I think the price is, well, how do I word this? There is a market for very expensive tents like this. Now, of course, that market is super limited. It's no different than when a company brings out a pro version of a phone or a super powerful graphics card or, or whatever else, right? There is a market there, but it's not made for everyone. Obviously, this tent is not made for everyone. It's like, I don't wanna bust Light Fighter's balls about this. I do respect the company. I respect their products. I respect how they've handled issues in the past. Before I wrap this up, I do wanna mention this. I did reach out to the company to get more information about this tent. That was a number of weeks ago. I've heard nothing. I've also requested a review sample of this tent and again I've heard nothing. My relationship with Light Fighter is I would say strained somewhat. I have purchased their products honestly reviewed them. For an example the Light Fighter 1 with the cold weather kit it's one of the coolest most functional most versatile tent systems out on the market today it is fantastic but there have been issues there have been bumps along the way. For an example with the Catamount tent the company sent this to me so I could check it out so I could review it with my testing, I discovered a major flaw. That tent leaked like mad. The company was able to take that information. They discovered a defect with the latest run. They did a massive recall. Because of that, I'm not sure if the company is willing to send me any more products to review. Hopefully they do. Hopefully they will. Because in my opinion, the way that the company responded to that issue with the Catamount tent was so impressive. They stood up. They said, hey, we got a problem. We got to get this thing off the market. We have to protect the users. We have to protect the men and women who are serving and using this tent. So because of the outdoor giver Review, there was a recall so I don't know if they're willing to go through anything like that again of course if they do happen to send the product to me I will review it honestly completely fairly completely objectively I will show you all what's good what's bad if there's something bad I'll show you why it is that's what I do with the channel here when I test out products I show you all what works and what doesn't and I explain why I don't like something and from there you can make up your own mind so in the end everyone that pretty much wraps it up for this episode I cannot wait to hear from you all. What do you all think about the Dragoon tent? <laughs> I can't help but go back to the price. $4,300, that's before taxes and shipping. By the time it's all said and done, I bet you it's around 5,000 bucks. $5,000 for this tent. I mean, it looks sweet, that's for sure. Will I be purchasing one of these tents? No, I won't. That's just simply too much money for myself. While I would love to have this, there's no way that I could justify spending that much money for this tent. What do you all think? Is there a way that you could justify spending that much money for this shelter? If so, comment down below. If not, comment down below. Everyone is welcome to sound off here with the Outdoor Gear Review. So folks, hit the like button before you go. It does help the channel. Check out the merch store. There's some cool new stuff out there. I will see you all next time. Be well, take care, strength and honor. Bye for now.